All right, guys. So we're on another job. We have an Amana condenser that I put in back in 2013. And we have a ring condenser that I put in back in 2016. This one, this one is fine. The Amana has a Freon leak right here, right behind here. It's like right in here somewhere. The only way I could fix it, I would have to start cutting the metal that's built on. So I gave the customer an option of cutting the metal and fixing the leak or changing out the condenser. And he chose to change the condenser. The insides, this is a four, these are 410 systems, 410A. You can see this is a 410 system. So we are going to uh, swap this condenser out today. It's not gonna be a ream because ream doesn't have any. It's gonna be an ICP. Okay, the Amana is out of the way. The day and night is in place. Again, ream was out of four tons. I was gonna, I would have loved to put another ream and, you know, match them up side by side and uh, have two nice looking reams, but they're out of them. Their equipment is scarce over here right now. So ICP had one, so we're doing what we have to do. And we're gonna tie these lines in now and solder them up. And uh, this is a really long line set. It's like almost a hundred foot. So we have a solenoid valve on the liquid line at the evaporator that we, and we're gonna go ahead and replace it because the other one, the uh, coil screw is missing and the, it's, the coil is shaking. So we're just gonna go ahead and change the whole solenoid while we have the system open. We interrupt this part of the video to bring or to address the trolls and the keyboard warriors of YouTube. <clears throat> You're about to see me braze this unit in with no nitrogen. And yes, I know you guys out there. Oh, he's not flowing nitrogen, blah, blah, blah. Look, I am 
just as I think it's very important to flow nitrogen. But I this is a these are systems that we took over that were brazed in by another company that I know. They were not brazed in with nitrogen. The condensers we changed with the indoor units. These systems have been running like that. And guys, I've brazed in a lot of systems with no nitrogen going behind other companies that I know that were previously brazed with no nitrogen. And I mean, if, if they were previously brazed with no nitrogen, you know, then what good does it really do for us to do it? You know, if there is flakes in the system. But when I do a complete change out inside and out, I always flow nitrogen. But, you know, I've done the research. I've brazed on a, on a table with a little piece of copper and then, you know, uh, tapped on a paper towel. It doesn't really do as much damage as you guys think it does. But I know a lot of you guys are going to say something to me about this. I really don't care. But, yeah, I'm not flowing nitrogen because these systems have been brazed in in the past without nitrogen. And I really didn't see where you know, putting nitrogen this time would help. Um, <clears throat> so I didn't do it. But like when I do inverters or a complete system inside and out, you know, because I blow the line sets out, I do flow nitrogen. So I think it is very important to flow nitrogen. It's your choice. There's a lot of people here on YouTube that don't flow nitrogen when they, when they install. So, you know, go after them too. Or... To the keyboard warriors out there, pick up a camera like I do. Have the balls to put out some content, okay? We'd appreciate that. Put out some content and show us how to do it. But whether you agree with this or not, you know, sorry. But it is what it is. Yes, I'm going
Okay, we're pulling a vacuum right now. We're at 1507 microns and dropping nice and fast. I'm not using my hoses, I'm just using the manifold. But we'll let this pull down and uh, then we'll cut it loose and uh, start it up. All right, guys, she's operational. The ream is running too. But it's coming around. It just the the, pre, the suction pressure just pumped down. But it's like I said, it's a, it's a long line set. It's like 80 something foot long, or right at 90, maybe a little over 90. That's why we have that solenoid valve. And I'm gonna put a picture of that solenoid valve. I'm just gonna take a picture of the new one we installed. So that way the trolls here on YouTube will say, "Oh, you didn't change no solenoid valve, boy." And just like, you know, all the other ones say, I don't do this and I don't do that. So I'll put a picture of that solenoid valve, but. It's pumping up, pressures are coming up. We're gonna let it run about 15, 20 minutes. All right, guys, we're all done. Looks good. Nice and quiet. It's quieter than the rain. The ream is actually overriding this one. So the ICP is quieter than the ream unit. That's kind of impressive. That's actually really impressive. I'm gonna show you guys a couple things I noticed on ICP. For one, they're not using Chinese capacitors anymore. I can't show you that because I've already put the door on. Take a look in there. y'all could see that aluminum coils they're using but it's not a micro channel it's aluminum tube aluminum tube and they're no longer using chinese capacitors thank y'all for watching we'll see y'all on the next one